Welcome, one and all, in here, out there, all around the world, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> this is, without a doubt, it's a troubling time, what with the pandemic and now a brutal, unprovoked war in Europe. But every once in a while, there's a little gleam of sunshine in the world, a child's smile, the first flower of spring, the January 6th committee laying out potential criminal charges against the former president. <sighs> Turns out there is a chance that trying to violently overthrow our democracy might be illegal. <laughs> the potential charge against the former president and his campaign is a criminal conspiracy to defraud the United States. To paraphrase an idiot and his bloodthirsty mob, lock him up. <laughs> this... I've never, I've never had my own bloodthirsty mob before. <laughs> I get the appeal, I have to say. This information comes from a civil court filing involving disgraced lawyer John Eastman, seen here starring in Indiana Jones and the Trickle of Flomax. <laughs> Eastman was the legal genius behind the theory that after a free and fair election, Vice President Mike Pence had the power under the Constitution to declare, psych! Naturally, the January 6th committee wants all of Easton's relevant documents and emails. So far, he's turned over uh, less than half of them, citing attorney-client privilege. But those claims were undercut because Eastman hasn't been able to prove that he was ever hired by the former president. In fact, an engagement letter that Eastman produced last week was unsigned. Not the first time the ex-pres has bailed on an engagement. <laughs> But the more important argument the committee is making here is that Eastman's claim of privilege was potentially voided by the crime-fraud exception, which holds that communications need not be kept confidential if an attorney is found to be assisting their client in the commission of a crime. That well, seems pretty reasonable. Your lawyer can't be an accessory to your crime. We learned that in the dramatic episode where we found out that Matlock had a fridge full of human feet. <laughs> the... The committee... The committee says that they have evidence... They have evidence that the former president knew he was committing fraud thanks to the testimony of former campaign advisor and soft-boiled Guy Fieri... <laughs> ..Jason Miller. According to Miller, the former president was well aware that his months of assertions about the stolen election were false because he had been told soon after Election Day by a campaign data expert in pretty blunt terms that he was going to lose. How blunt? Because if the message was delivered via anything more complicated than scratch and sniff, I don't think it's gonna get through. <laughs> speaking... Speaking... <laughs> scratch and sniff. And scratch and sniff. Mm. <laughs> speaking of leaders lying to their people, Vladimir Putin, so far, his invasion has been an embarrassment to Mother Russia, so today, he met with his security council, and he made this surprising claim. I would like to say that special military operation is being conducted uh, strictly in accordance to the plan and schedule. It's true. I've written it all on list. Phase one, invade. <laughs> Phase two, world hate us. Phase three, money and wallet turn to dust. <laughs> Phase four, victory, celebrate with Fudgy the Whale Cake. <laughs> one of the reasons... Fudgy the turnip... Mm -hmm. Fudgy the... Fudgy the whale turnip. <laughs> One of the reasons the invasion's not going according to Putin's plan is because ordinary Ukrainians are all joining the fight. Like one Ukrainian costume designer who is using her movie industry skills not to dress actors, but to source uniforms, shoes, helmets, gloves, body armor, and knee pads. I am not surprised at all. Everyone in show business knows there is no tougher or more resourceful unit than the wardrobe department. <laughs> Every day, I show up in a fleece vest crusted with chili stains... <laughs> ..and they transform me into this. <laughs> and... they got to use an ice scraper. Yeah. <laughs> they got to scrape me out. Uh -huh. And listen to this woman. Yeah, we wanted just to live here on our own land 
yes, to make our own mistakes, to have our own maybe corrupted governments, but the ones that we elect. Yes, democracy is all about having the right to elect and then hate your own leaders. <laughs> Ask any mayor of New York City. <laughs> that woman right there also introduced us to the next generation of Ukrainian patriots. It feels like all 44 million people in Ukraine, young and old, men and women, everybody is is united, everybody is a soldier. Yes, this is what's happening, yes. Even, even the, this baby is a soldier, I think. That woman is unbelievably tough and absolutely right. Anyone who's had a baby knows they are small but relentless opponents. <laughs> and masters, masters of sleep deprivation torture. <laughs> oh, oh, mommy. Oh, mommy, you want to sleep? Yes? Well, tell us where the binky is. No, no, not that one. I want the blue one this time. <laughs> Whoa, what is this thing? Hold on, there's another one. You didn't tell me about these. Oh, nom, 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 nom. Foot! What is a foot? <laughs> Seeing that woman speaking with her baby in her arms reminds you of the terrible human cost of all of this, the terrible waste of war. These are ordinary people trying to go about their lives while a vicious psychopath unleashes modern weapons of war against them, and it can make you feel hopeless to see this human suffering. But there are things that we can do. There's a list of organizations you can donate to pinned to the top of our Twitter page. Go to at Colbert Late Show to find out how you can help. Now, one thing everyone... One thing everyone's trying to do right now is figure out what's going on inside Vladimir Putin's head. And we got a little insight this week from former president and grandpa really getting a kick out of this library puppet show. <laughs> George W. Bush. Bush was at a fundraiser on Tuesday, and during a Q&A, he recounted a very telling exchange that he and Putin once had years ago involving their pets. Well, of course, they were both famous for their lap dogs. <laughs> Here's the story. Here's the story. Take a second. Take a second. <laughs> Here's the story. According to Bush, I introduced Vladimir Putin to Barney, our Scottish terrier, and Putin dissed him. <laughs> a year later, Laura and I go visit Vladimir, and he says, I want you to meet my dog. I said, yeah, sure. And I'll never forget, outruns a huge Russian hound, and Putin says, bigger, stronger, and faster than Barney. <laughs> Putin is so insecure... He has to compare dog sizes? <laughs> that little bitch. <laughs> but female dog. I mean a female dog. I mean, that to it's a female dog. But this does, this does mean we know how to terrify Putin now just by releasing footage of our latest military asset, Clifford. <laughs> the only reason Putin feels he can act with such impunity, really, it's because he knows China has his back, and evidently he has theirs, because according to reports, Putin wanted to invade Ukraine earlier, but he waited because China asked Russia to delay the Ukraine war until after the Olympics. Yes, they didn't want Russia to ruin their Olympics with the invasion. They wanted Russia to ruin their Olympics with a 15-year-old freebasing Peepop's heart pills. <laughs> and after that report, a spokesperson for Chinese President Xi Jinping claimed they didn't ask Russia for the delay. Well, this is just a classic case of he said, she said. <laughs> China is just about the only friend Russia has left because every other major country and corporation is disowning them. For instance, IKEA is closing its Russian stores. And this will, yes, sure. This will go into effect as soon as they can find that little Allen wrench to take the stores apart. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Kyle McLaughlin and Arian Moyed. And when we come back, meanwhile.